Hey guys, so welcome to this video on Python programming and machine learning. So in this video, we want to create a artificial neural network that classifies the menis handwritten digit images as a number zero to nine. Now currently I'm on Google's website called colab.research.google.com and I'll put a link to this in the description below. And the reason why I'm on this is because it makes it really easy to get started programming in the Python language. So you don't have to install Python onto your machine or your computer. You can just simply go to this URL on your browser. And of course, you need a Google account to log in and you can immediately get started with programming in Python. So speaking of that, let's go ahead and get started writing our Python program. So we're going to go up here to the left and click File and then click on New Python 3 Notebook. And it's going to open up a new tab and a new cell for us where we can immediately start programming in Python. So I'm going to put something like print uh, Python, Python is amazing, exclamation point. And we're going to run this cell by clicking that button to the left. And then we'll see that that gets printed to the screen here. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell by going up here and clicking code. And we can see a new cell was uh, created here. And I'm going to print, you know it exclamation point and to run this cell by itself we just click that button here to the left and you can see it prints out you know it there now I want to get rid of this so I'm just going to click this X button here and I want to get rid of this here so I'm just going to click this X button here alright now what if I want to run all of my cells so I go up here to runtime and I click run all and then we can see that it runs all the cells alright so I'm done with this second cell here so I'm going to click inside of it and go to the right and click on these three dots to click on delete cell to get rid of that cell alright and I'm done here for now but this is where we're going to start programming uh, but before we get started programming I want to change the runtime so go up here to runtime and click change runtime type and we are using Python 3 so that's fine but we're going to change the hardware to GPU so hopefully this makes training our artificial neural network a little bit faster and we click save Okay, so first thing I like to do is create a description for our program. So that way, if I look back in the future uh, at this program, then I know exactly what it does just by reading the description. So again, this program classifies the menist handwritten digit images as a number 0 to 9. And I put this on the next row to make it look a little bit better. And so what this means is that we're going to be getting a bunch of images that people have written, written down. And these are going to be images of numbers 0 to 9. And they're going to try to classify them as numbers 0 through 9. All right. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have installed our dependencies or packages. So to do that, just put exclamation point pip install and then tensorflow, which is one of the packages that we're going to use. Kiros is another. NumPy, Minist, and Matplotlib or Lib. And I'm going to run this and hopefully it installs everything that we need. And it looks like it did and we're done. So I'm going to exit out of here. All right. So next we're going to import the packages. And I guess I'll actually create a new cell for that. And I'll put in comments here import the packages, also sometimes called dependencies. Depend, dependencies. There we go. All right. So we're going to import numpy as np, and we're going to import minist. And minist is where we're going to get our data set from. Then we're going to import matplotlib or lib dot py plot as plt. So this is going to be the graph if we so choose to graph the images. And now we're going to get our our machine learning library or package called Kiros. So from Kiros.models, we're going to import sequential. So sequential will be the artificial neural network or ANN for short architecture. Okay, and then from Kiros.layers, we're going to import the dense method and that will give us the layers in the artificial neural network or ANN for short. Okay and last but not least from kiros.utils we're going to import the two categorical method to transform our data. So let's go ahead and run this 
and hopefully we don't get any errors. So it looks like all of our packages that we are going to be using are imported. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell. And here we're going to load the data set. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called train underscore images and set it equal to the menist dot train underscore images method. Okay. And this gives us our training data. Next, I'm going to create a variable called train underscore labels and set it equal to menist dot train underscore labels. So this gives us our training uh, data as well. But this is the labels and the other one is images. All right. Now I need some testing uh, data. So I'll create a variable called test underscore images and set it equal to menist dot test underscore images. And this is going to be our training data images. And then we'll create another variable called test underscore labels and set it equal to menist dot test underscore uh, labels method. And this is the training data of our labels. All right, so let me go ahead and run this and make sure everything is good and it looks like it is. So let's go ahead and create a new cell here where we're going to manipulate the data a little bit. We're going to do something called normalizing the data. So we're going to normalize the images. Okay, so we're going to normalize the, the pixel values, which are or range from values 0 to 255. And we're going to change this to values that range from negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. Okay, and the reason why we're doing this is to make make our network easier to train. All right, so to do this, I'm going to create uh, or re I'm going to put my variable train underscore images and set it equal to train. Uh, actually, I'm going to set it to train underscore images divided by 255. So now this right here will return a value 0 to 1. So train images maximum value can be 255, uh, like we see up here. And the minimum value that it can be is 0, like we see up here. All right. So right now we get a range 0 to 1. But we want to range from negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So in order to do that, we just subtract 0 0.5. So now this right here to the left can be at maximum uh, the value 1, right? So we would get for this total 1 minus 0 0.5. So the new maximum value will be 0 0.5. And then the minimum value of this whole thing here can be is 0. So if we do 0 minus 0 0.5, we get negative 0 0.5. And now we have that new range. All right, so now we need to do the same thing for test images. So I'm going to set test images equal to test underscore images divided by 255 minus 0 0.5. And I think that's good. All right. So next, I'm going to do something called flattening the images. So flatten the images. So we're going to flatten each 28 by 28 image into a 784 dimensional vector to pass into the neural network. OK. And I'll put this down one row just to make it look a little bit better. Where did I get that number 784 from? Well, 784 is equal to 200, I'm sorry, it's equal to 28 to the power of 2, or 28 squared. So uh, 28 squared is equal to 784. All right, so that's where I got that number from. And let's go ahead and do this. So in, in order to do this, we need to use a method called reshape. So I'm going to set train images equal to train underscore images dot reshape and we're going to put in negative 1 comma 784 all right and we need to do the same thing for the test images so we just say set test images equal to train or sorry test underscore images dot reshape and we're just going to put in the same values negative 1 784 and now let's 
print the shape of our images. All right, so to do that, we just say print train underscore images dot shape. And I'm also going to print the test images shape. So test underscore images dot shape. And let's go ahead and run this and see what we get back. Hopefully no errors. All right, so the like is running. Give it some time here. So hopefully what we're going to get back are uh, very are 60,000 rows of data and 785 um, uh, sorry 784 columns so what well, looks like it looks like I'm disconnected here so it's trying to connect there we go all right so now let's run this again I don't know why I was disconnected but so we do get back 60,000 rows uh, of data for the training images and 784 columns and then for the testing set, we get 10,000 rows of data and 784 columns. All right, so I'm going to put that in comments here. I'm going to put uh, 60,000 rows and 784 columns. And then here I will put 10,000 rows and 784 columns. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now we can start to build the model. All right, so we're going to build a model with, let's see here, oops, I'm going to go back up to the cell here. We're going to build a model with three layers. All right, we want two layers to, um, let me see here, we want two layers with, with 60, let me do, how many do I want? I guess I do with 64 neurons and the red loop function. And then I want one layer, the last layer. I want it to have 10 neurons, right? Because we're going to have digits 0 through 9. So we're going to have 10 different digits that we're going to try to classify on. And we're going to use the soft max function. All right. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called model, set it equal to sequential. And then all I have to do is say model dot add. And now we're going to use the dense method to add in the uh, layers and the neurons and the function. So layers, I'm sorry. So we have dense method. We want 64 neurons activation function is going to equal ReLU. And just for this first, um, just for this first layer, we have to put in the input dimensions. So input dim, and that's going to be the number of columns that we have, which is 784. All right, so next I can say model.add dense. Now we're just going to have 64 neurons. Activation is going to be equal to ReLU. And we don't have to put that that uh, that dimension there. All right. And then the last one, the last layer we need to add. So we say dense, and we have 10 neurons with an activation function equal to softmax. Okay. So let me go ahead and just run this, and hopefully there's no errors, and it's not excellent. All right. So I'm going to go down to this cell that I accidentally created, and we're going to compile the compile the model okay so uh, the model is going to need a optimizer and a loss function so the loss function measures measures how well the model did on training and then tries to improve on it using the optimizer. Okay, so I'll put that down here and let's go ahead and create this. So we just say model.compile and we use that dot compile method and we need to put in some parameters here. So we're going to put in the optimizer and I'm going to use 
an optimizer called Atom. And then we put, of course, comma, and we need to put in the loss uh, function. So we're going to use a loss function called categorical underscore cross entropy. All right, and then comma. And the reason why I'm using this is because this allows us to use classes that are greater than two. Okay, um, a a very popular one is called binary cross entropy, which is for two classes, but uh, we're using many, so we're not using that loss function. And then we want to get some metrics, so we want to get the accuracy of our model. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Hopefully. Uh, everything's okay and it is so we're gonna go ahead and create a new cell and here we're going to train the model and to do that we just say model dot fit so we're going to use that method and we're going to need to tell it the training data to fit on so we want to fit on train underscore images and then we need to tell it the uh the categorical data or the uh the labels right so we need to tell it what each image is so the classes, so train labels, but uh, the training labels will give us a, a number or a digit zero to nine and it's expecting a vector of dimensions. So it's expecting 10, um, uh, 10 it's expecting a 10 dimensional vector. So in order to have a 10 dimensional vector, we need to use that method called two underscore categorical and then input train labels. So what do I mean by that is that our function returns two, and I'll put an example here. Our function returns two, and it expects this. So this is what our two categorical function does. So it transforms it into a multi-dimensional, uh, a 10 dimensional vector. So let me see, uh, zero, one, zero, one, two. So what what this function does is it really gives us a, a vector like this. So 0, 0, 1, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7, 8, 9, 10. So now we get a 10, uh, a 10 dimensional vector, okay? So let's uh, see here. Next thing we need to do is tell it the epochs. And epochs is going to be equal to 5. And what is epochs? Well, epochs is the number of iterations over the entire data set to train on. Okay, next we need to tell it the batch underscore size. And we're gonna set that equal to 32. And this right here is the number of samples per gradient update for training. All right, and I don't think I actually need this comma here. So let's go ahead and run this. So hopefully it runs pr fairly fast. Right now it's on epoch one and it's actually pretty slow. So this may take some time. Um, what we can do though, I can go over here to the right and what we can see is the loss and we can see uh, the accuracy of the model. And we want the accuracy to continue going up and we want this loss to continue going down. Okay, so it looks like it's actually almost done. And that's because we're using that GPU here. So it's training it pretty pretty quickly. All right, and let's see here. It looks like our model is going to be pretty good. So like here on that last epoch, you got a 96.6% uh, accuracy. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new cell here. And what we're gonna do here is evaluate the model Okay, so to do that, it just say model dot fit, and we want to evaluate it on the training data. So we do train images, and then of course the the labels we need to have those and transform those into a ten dimensional vector. So two categorical test underscore label. All right, and we can go ahead and run this. Um, let me see here, test images to, uh, uh, let's see what's the problem here, to categorical. Let me just go up here and copy and paste this here. So I'm copying it by saying Control C or by uh, clicking on Control C and I'm gonna paste it using Control V. And instead of train here, of course, we're gonna put test 
and let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so it looks like I am getting some. Uh, uh, oh, I, I see the problem is um, I use model.fit and I need to use model.evaluate. So that's my uh, mistake. I need to use that method. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so now did I misspell evaluate? Uh, looks like no. Okay, so two categorical test labels. What's the issue here? Input arrays should have the same number of samples as target arrays. Okay, so train images and two categorical uh, model dot evaluate. Let me see here. Where am I making a mistake at? Uh, two categorical. Yes, that's fine. And oh, that's the problem. I have train images instead of test images. These small mistakes are horrible. All right, so let's go ahead and run them. And what we see is a 96.33% accuracy here and a loss of 0 0.12547. I'm not going to say the whole thing there, but now we got that um, done. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And what we can do is we can actually save this model just by putting model.save underscore weights. And we can save it to uh, to disk. So we can just say model um, dot h5 if we want to save this uh, this model that we have all right but we're not going to worry about that for now we'll go ahead and create a new uh, new cell and let's start making predictions so we're going to predict on the first five test images so keep in mind that the output of our network is 10 probabilities so we'll use np.arg max method to turn those into actual digits so first thing I want to do is I want to print the uh, the prediction well we need to create the prediction first so I'm going to create a variable called predictions and set it equal to model dot predict and we're going to predict on the test images and we want to predict on the first five so let's say colon five here all right, and then I'm going to print out predictions. All right, so let's go ahead and run that so we can see the predictions. And now you can see those probabilities. So we're going to use that uh, arc function to print out the label. So uh, here I'm going to say print our model's prediction. Uh, here we're going to say print. We're going to use np now uh, from numpy. So np arc max and we're going to put in our predictions and set the axis equal to one and now let's go ahead and run that and arc max i put a z here so let's run this again and now we see what we um what the model is predicting all right so let's see what the actual labels are so we just say print test underscore labels and then colon five here and let's run that and so it looks like it predicted them um, very well. It, it predicted each value uh, as we had hoped. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And I actually kind of want to see the images. So for i in range, in range 0 to 5, I'm going to create a variable called first underscore image and set it equal to test underscore images at position i and then first underscore image is going to equal a numpy array where we're going to input first underscore image and the data type is going to be a float okay and i'm going to create a variable called pixels and set it equal to first underscore uh oh first underscore image dot reshape into a 28 by 28 and then plt dot image show so I actually okay yeah image show is fine um, and then pixels and now let's plot the uh, let's show the plot so let me run this hopefully everything runs smoothly and it does so now we can see our our images which is pretty cool. And if we want to make them black and white, I can just put a comma here, cmap equal gray, and run this. And now we can make them black and white. 
All right, so that's basically it, guys. Thank you for watching. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button. And if you found this video helpful, please share it. Maybe others will as well. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.